everybody, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments, and today I'm doing a demo of the box kite dies. So there are two sizes. There's the two by three size, which I won't be doing today, but there's also this three by four size, which I am using this one for the demo today. And even though I'm not using the smaller one, the same techniques can be used that I showed today can be used with that one as well. So the three by four die, if you're familiar with our corner tile dies, the box kite die works very similarly. It cuts four pieces that'll fit this three by four space here. So most of our dies come with like a frame piece as I like to call it, and this one does not. It actually does cut your photo or paper into four pieces and then together they build one big piece. So you'll see that more during the demo today. And you'll also want to pre-plan what photographs you wanna use. So the picture before in this picture, I made sure that the subjects, like this little sheep here, could fit within the space I want to use it for. So it's small enough I could use it for the top or bottom or sides. The previous photo I had, it only really could work on the side and not on the top or bottom. And you could also use photos like this. Uh, flower photos are really easy to cut since you don't have to crop them in a specific way, right? All right, now that you've been introduced to the dyes, let's get started. To begin, you will of course need a die machine. I'm using the Revolution from We Are Memory Keepers. And you wanna make sure you're cutting in the right shape and in the right direction you want your photo to go. So here, my subject fits in this, the side triangle spaces pretty well. On this one, you can see that she can't fit and I would cut you know, out part of the photograph, so that would look bad. So I decided to go with the left triangle over here. She fits in, my subject fits in there very well. Uh, so I'm gonna use that side of my die to cut out this photograph. And I am using a magnetic plate, so everything stays down really well. And I'm using a crease pad here so I don't get those indented edges around my photograph. And of course, once you're done, it may seem like the photo did not cut through all the way, but all you have to do is pull it out and you'll see it did cut. So I got my first photo cut already. All right, so I'm just gonna go in order. So I'm cutting my next photograph with the same side. And here my subjects are so far away, it kind of didn't really matter which side I put them on. But again, it's important to pre-plan your page before you start cutting. All right, so there's my next one. And now I'm gonna cut my photos with the other side. It doesn't matter. Now, my photo is sticking off the edge and it doesn't matter to me if that gets ruined, but please note, do make sure your dies, any die you use does not stick out from the edge of the edge because it will get ruined, it will be bent, you will not be able to use it ever again. So watch out for the dies, don't damage them. All right, I got my second photo here done with that same triangle side. All right, now I'm gonna use the top and bottom of the die here. So again, you wanna be careful and use the part of the die you want to use for your, or that you wanna crop your photo with. So here I made sure I used that top portion. So yeah, just take your time and pay attention and always double check to make sure that your main subject that you wanna crop is going to be cropped with the right part of the box kite die. All right, so I have this photo down and that was really easy. Again, my subject, a little baby sheep, which was so cute, was small enough to fit in that space. And here, I'm kind of seeing, checking to make sure my subject fits in that space pretty well. It was kind of tight here. All right, so I have this other top cut done. So on this one, I'm using the bottom side, but I have that little white strip of paper there. The So that white strip was there because I print my photo to actual size and not the full four by six size. So it made the photo slightly smaller and my die was possibly gonna cut out a little bit of that white space, which I don't really like. So I cut it off to make sure I was gonna get the actual photograph part. 
So again, I always double check. And I do recommend if you have a little bit of that like white space from your printed paper to trim it off if your die is going to get really close to that edge. All right, I'm using the bottom part again. And there are people way, way, way far away in the photograph, but I also was partially getting that building in there. So the box kite die is obviously great if you have a lot of photographs that were taken at a distance because it is a really small space. And it's also great for photos like this one where it's flowers. Super easy, you can't go wrong with them. So I'm cutting these with the crease pad again and this time I'm gonna keep two pieces. So I'm just taking it apart and keeping the two pieces I wanna use on my layout. All right, I'm gonna do this with every flower photograph. And I'm paying attention to where the box kite is lining up on the photograph because I want to keep the part that I wanna place on my page, right? So this time I paid attention to where that top and left cuts were going. This time I'm looking at where the top and right triangle are going to be cropped. And just take your time, like here I kinda of had a a little bit of a hard time figuring out where do I exactly want to place it, but I figured it out. All right, I'm going to cut it through. And I love flower photographs. They're so easy. Like I said, you can't go wrong. You don't accidentally crop someone's head out. You know, they're, they're, they're great subjects for any mosaic layout. All right, and this time I'm keeping that right side in the very bottom cut with these photographs, or this last photograph, I should say. All right, now I'm gonna keep those two pieces and I'm done with the cutting. Now I'm gonna show you how you can place the box kite pieces on your layout. I could have kept the flower photos together, but I just wanna show you how to piece everything together if you had four separate pieces. And very, very important to use repositionable glue for this die because I guarantee you'll probably have to reposition it because most of the time I don't, maybe not most time, but sometimes I don't get it on there quite right and I have to make adjustments because it can be a little tricky to line it up on the grid paper. All right, so this is the top piece of the die cut. So I'm placing it very carefully on the top line here. And then that left edge should be barely on the grid line because this next piece needs to cover that left line. And I did grab a piece of cardstock here because I realized, oh, that would be a good idea. <laughs> and with any dies, including this one, I've noticed you really need to get to the glue right on those corners really well. I find the corners will stick up if you don't glue them down. So make sure with this die and any die you're using that you glue down each of the sides and corners really well. And this one here, I carefully place it on that left line and made sure they both fit there together. And you should still have a reasonably sized gap. You can see I have the gap between the photos I just put down in the pattern paper. If your gap doesn't look pretty, if your gap is looking really small, you may want to adjust it. All right, and then the next two pieces are fairly easy to put on. You just wanna place it carefully next to your other pieces. I put the right side on first, but it probably wouldn't matter which one you put on at this point. And obviously you want to put the sides on that will line up on the grid paper and then put the ones that won't line up on the grid paper last. All right, so I have this first section finished and it looks very nice. All right, if placing the cuts directly on the grid paper is a little more challenging for you, you can always cut a piece of cardstock like I did here with the three by four size from set C. If you're using the two by three box kite, you would use the two by three size from set C. And really easy, I just placed it on a grid paper. And the cardstock's really helpful, I think. I think it makes it easier because you're not figuring out where to place each little piece on the line. You have your cardstock background and that just helps align things easier, I think. So I know a lot of you don't wanna waste your cardstock. So that's why I'm showing it both on the line and also with the cardstock. If, like I said, if placing it directly on the grid paper is a little bit challenging for you. Again, I have my cardstock here so I don't get glue on everything else. 
just make sure you rub that excess glue off because you don't want to place another piece of photo down and then you get glue on your photo. Pretty much I'm building it like I did with the last layout, but this time I don't have to... It doesn't really matter which piece you put on first if you use a piece of cardstock because the grid lines are already covered up. It's just a matter of covering up the piece of cardstock. So as you can see, this might be a little bit faster and a little bit easier for some of you, especially if you're new with this die. And just so you know, uh, with the box kite, and this includes the corner tiles, and we also have the North Pole die that has this similar technique of how to place them together, there should, there should be a gap between, so I have the two three by four spaces here, and then there's you know, the usual gaps between those and the grid paper or the pattern paper, right? But there should not be a gap between each piece of the box kite die. You can see these photographs, they're squished right next to each other. I place them so close together, you don't see the paper, the cardstock, or the grid paper behind the photographs. So keep that in mind. I see some people putting a gap between them, and I'm just letting you know there is not supposed to be a gap between them. They won't fit the grid paper correctly if you try to separate them. So keep that in mind. They're supposed to be right next to each other and you should not see a gap between the box kite die cuts. When they're, you know, to make the one piece like here, you don't see the background behind or in between the photos here. All right, I have my last section in here. <laughs> I'm just going to... Again, glue down each of the pieces here on the corners, especially I'm lining it up on this top line here. And what's nice about the bottom section here is I actually could line up that top piece with the bottom piece above it, if that makes sense. So it kind of helped me see where to place it along the top grid line here. And if you do decide to keep two pieces of the same photograph, you can just glue it at the same time. And then I have my last piece here and I am finished and I think it looks fantastic it makes this really nice diamond shape I purposely placed the floral photographs on the corners to frame the rest of the photographs and that's what gives it this diamond design and I placed them on here horizontally but you could also make this design go vertically and also the flower photographs they are right next to each other but you still get that line that makes the box kite design and I think that looks really nice. All right, so we have reached the end of today's demo. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the box kite die and if you did be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also if you haven't already definitely subscribe to our channel we don't want you to miss out on future tutorials and so we have we definitely have more dies coming and lately I have been showing videos on how to design layouts and if you haven't seen those yet definitely check those out so we have lots of good stuff on our channel so definitely hit that subscribe button all right I hope you guys enjoyed this demo and I will see you next time.